Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Care Food and Talks with Jess. I am Jess. Um, today we are going to be talking about this amazing, wonderful, expensive fruit called the dragon fruit. I'm sure you guys have seen it in your local grocery stores and um, Asian markets as well as some American markets as well as it is um, currently in season June to September. So right now we're in the summer. This is definitely in season. As you can see, it's like a nice plump pink color. There is some green tones to it. You see where it got cut off of the plant tree there. So um, just some facts here about the dragon fruit. It is a fruit that comes from the cactus tree. So just like with aloe, it's one of those, um, it comes from that tree that it doesn't need too much water, but when it does have water, it just produces the these amazing fruits or plants like aloe is really amazing as well and it comes from the dry dry cactus plant now the thing about this fruit is that it is very high in vitamin c very high in magnesium vitamin b iron it's great for blood pressure health as well as gut health as well um definitely a great addition to smoothies salads drinks just adding it in now as i mentioned earlier the dragon fruit is very expensive it can be um i believe i paid almost four dollars for uh just this one fruit and i'm sure if you've looked at it in the grocery store especially while it's in season you've seen about four or five dollars maybe three depending on the size of it now though it's expensive it's expensive for a reason it is a a fruit that also helps with aiding in antioxidants, building up your antioxidants in your system, as well as fighting antibodies and cancerous cells. So it's one of those action-packed fruits that, of course, if it's doing all these items, you have to pay for it, right? I don't know why I don't make the reasoning. I don't, I don't make the choices, but I do know that when you do have one, it is worth it. It's definitely worth it. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a nice lime and dragon fruit spritzer that you guys can make at home. Spritzer or lemonade, you can have it both ways that I'll be making with the hibiscus tea. All right, so the first thing that you would want to do is go ahead and cut it with a nice sharp knife, which I have already done here. And you can see all of the delicious seeds. It's white on the inside and you'll see all of the fresh seeds. There are some that you'll see that are the same color on the outside, that nice fuchsia color um, from the outside. This one is actually white and it's nice and juicy. You see that the seeds are um, not dull, nice and black. And we're gonna definitely utilize this to go ahead and start with our juice mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my other ingredients here, which is going to be, we're gonna have some oranges. I have about three and a half limes. I have the half over there. And then I have my organic hibiscus tea. Now, for those of you who don't know, hibiscus is very good just for the body. It's um, full of antioxidants. It is organic. It also has some lemongrass in there. It's just a good refresher for your system and a good hydrator for your system as well. You can use it, of course, to drink. I drink a lot of tea. But this is also good if you take some and you put it in the refrigerator in a little spray bottle for your hair. It's actually very moisturizing for your hair as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut up my fruit, get this ready so that we can go ahead and make this tea.
everyone so i just completed as you saw blending up my fresh dragon fruit fresh lime fresh orange and my raw honey semi raw honey and uh blended up the mixture and this is what came out it is a nice kind of thicker uh sauce thicker uh, juice rather thicker juice you can actually keep it like this and put it in your fridge if you want but we're gonna take it that step up and add the hibiscus tea to it now my fresh hibiscus tea is in the fridge I just boiled it had it cool down a little bit and I have it in the fridge just so we can get that fresh cool taste and I'm gonna blend and put everything together in a so we have our fresh brewed and cooled down hibiscus tea we have a piece about a fourth of our dragon fruit left, our fresh orange and lime slices are fresh. We have our delicious kind of pulp of <laughs> dragon fruit, oranges, lime, and honey to your tasting. Okay, I'm gonna make sure it tastes well for me. You see the little consistency here. Oh, yep. That's just enough sweetness for me right now. And then we also have our funnel and our leader, which is what I'm going to put my uh, refresher in and just a cup for me to have some refresher as well. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is get my funnel and go ahead and put my uh, fresh dragon fruit mixture in here. Right. I don't want to waste anything. And then we'll see because of the seeds, it's kind of getting a little stuck. So you want to just get your spoon in there. All of the magnesium, vitamin B and A, the antioxidants. Once again, this is great for gut health. And imagine if I had some ginger, I would have put some ginger in here as well. That would have been a perfect addition to it. And I'm going to go ahead and add my cooled down hibiscus tea without making too much of a mess so the colors are blending which is what I like to see just gonna put a little bit more okay and i like how the colors are blending out, making like a nice pink purple here so i'm going to go ahead and mix it mix that right up try and get the seeds flowing get the dragon fruit as well as the hibiscus just blended together and then i'm going to go ahead and add my garnishes because what's better than garnishes, right? Go ahead and add that in. And I'm also going to just go ahead and add some of the ice that I do have here. I'm probably, let's see if it fits. Just add a cube of ice. And then I'm also going to add a cube for my actual glass here. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just taste the tea. And if it needs some more honey or if it needs some brown sugar, I'm going to go ahead and add that. Oh, and we cannot forget another piece of our dragon fruit here. It's very soft. The texture is almost like kiwi without the, um, you know, that uh, kind of reiki taste on kiwi where you can feel like it's um, agitating your tongue. Hi, everyone. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video with our hibiscus and dragon fruit lemonade spritzer summer drink that we did make. I do have some here for our tox section. So I have it here, just gonna mix it up a little bit before I make myself a little cup. You see all the delicious seeds and the citrus is still in there. So I'm excited, I'm gonna pour myself a little drinky drink as we just chit chat for a few moments here. So uh, cheers if you made it. 
And if not, what are you waiting for? Mm hmm. Mm. It just smells like, it just tastes like summer. It's like a whole mm, summer and it tastes like hydration. I don't know, like water, but not. Very good, very light, uh, very tasty too, especially with the hibiscus. I love it. But today, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about what Food & Talks is, right? So Food & Talks is clearly my company. The whole goal of the company is just to bring back conversation in the kitchen, bring back conversation among family and friends and comrades. It just seems like we've gotten so busy the last couple of years with life with life, with adulting, with having families, with building out careers, with chasing dreams, with writing out goals and, and desiring to see them full that we have neglected to connect as people. And we really just have social media kind of like as our outlet and as our catch up, which does help and it does assist. I'm not knocking that, but we are human. And I do believe that we are created and made for human connection. And so for me, Food and Talks is just a way for us to connect here while we're doing video, for us to connect if we're if anyone is on my virtual chats and my virtual cooking classes, for us to connect in person when we're able to do that again as well, so that we can just have those memories. Um, for those of you who grew up with family or close friends who are like family and remember like holidays or different family events where everybody would get together and back then, you know, the women were in the kitchen cooking and the guys were around kind of doing whatever guys do. I don't know guys. <laughs> but you know, the family was around, the family was together and maybe your grandmother or your aunt or maybe a family friend would be there with you guys too. And you guys would talk and discuss, or if you were a kid, like I was, you'd listen in on grown folks business when you weren't supposed to, but you'd, you'd have this connect. that would be just kind of this, um, this reunion, this, this unity happening, even if it wasn't always the happiest of times, you know, all of my holidays weren't always great, but there are those key memories where I remember we were all together. There was some laughter, even if it wasn't for the whole time. And just that camaraderie of memories of family was there. And that's just a good feeling that I feel like we definitely have gotten away from with social media and just times of changing. Um, I do see we're kind of in a forced reunion time with family and friends just because of this whole pandemic so it's uh, as much as there was a lot of bad and it has been a lot of bad that's happened with it with losses and a lot of tragedy there is some some good in regards to people being able to really slow down i know for myself it's made me kind of continue to think more, reevaluate myself, where I'm going, what I want to do, in addition to being an essential worker because I am one of the essential workers. It's just had me value, you know, um, people time. I've mentioned before, I'm definitely an extrovert, 20% introvert, but mostly extrovert. And so I love being around people, connecting and talking. So being more, I say it in by myself, has given me a lot of time to think and reevaluate and journal and you know do some other things to kind of help with the transition which i did mention in my last video if you guys haven't seen that but it also reminded me of how much i enjoy company and how much i enjoy people and how much i enjoy connecting and cooking which is why i do it which is why i teach it you know so that's my heart here with food and talks with jess is just virtually cooking we're chit chatting we're talking we're cooking here live we're cooking here you know on the other platforms and just connecting and bringing your kids in or maybe one of your girlfriends could come over or one of your guy friends could come over and you guys just having cooking night have your drinks have your food and then you guys just chit chat and reconnect it's crazy how much we think or we think we think or we assume that we know about our friends and family, but truth be told, they're always changing and evolving and we miss it because of how busy life is. So Food and Talks with Jess is a chance for you guys to cook, connect and talk with me and then go ahead and take this food that you guys just created or the drink that you guys just created and connect with family, connect with friends. Hey, I just tried this new recipe. Let's make it together or watch the videos together and then chit chat and connect with me here and connect with each other. Just finding out more about each other because we're ever evolving. We're ever changing. You know, we're not, you can't assume that you know everything about the people in your life. We can't, we can't assume that because we're ever changing. We can't, um, 
default them to who they were 20 minutes ago or who they were a couple years ago. Everyone changes and evolves, whether for the good or bad, but you have to allow people to show you who they are, show you the new them, and then you have the choice, you know, to embrace that, to talk about that, to talk about changes and growth. So I just believe that conversation is the key to relationships. Conversation is the key to connecting and growing and helping us also live longer. You know, that's why people... Most people that live longer, you know, they they have a partner with them, whether it's a sister, a brother, whether it's a mate, the elderly, if you've seen them, they live longer when people are around, people are connecting them or, or they're, they're speaking and talking to people. It helps them a lot. So cheers to food and talks. Cheers to 2020 reconnecting, cooking together, talking together, connecting, creating, and learning. That is what we're all about. We're create, we learn, and we connect together as teammates as comrades in this food and talks journey so cheers again thank you so much for viewing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye